Now before we jump into flipping to a mill episode number two, we got to go ahead and reveal the finest cards that MLB The Show went ahead and already revealed so far. So we got Kansas City Royals, Salvador Perez, we go up, they also revealed Ryan Mountcastle for the Baltimore Orioles, and then we continue going up, Max Muncy has been revealed for the Dodgers, and then Freddie Freeman has been revealed for the Atlanta Braves, and then last but not least, Cattell Marte was also revealed today for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now there's something I want you all to pay attention to, right? It says finest right here, but then it goes to secret one, and it goes to secret two. So what do you think those two secrets could be? Let me know down in the comment section and let's get into flipping to a mill. And we are back with another episode of flipping to a mill. And you might be saying you're wearing the same clothes as the last episode. What's going on? You don't take showers? Well, this is right after the last episode, right? Now I'm going to actually time myself, give myself an hour and see how far we can get, especially flipping these two cards right here, because I promise you, I made almost 150K in 40 minutes I want to say so I want to see how much I can actually make in an hour right so we're gonna be doing this together we have 62k add 75k to that 62k because we had to go ahead and buy the packs for the series pack champs go inside the description subscribe to all the other YouTube channels follow me on all my socials turn on the notification bell and if you would like to become a member become a member like button red subscribe button notification bell once again and we have to spend that in order to start our pack champs series. So at 75k to that, we actually have around 133k, you could say. And let's see how much we can make. So I'll put the stopwatch running as soon as I put my first buy order, right? So we're gonna put Jorge Posada. We're just gonna outright buy 10. So finalize order and start. Boom. Alright, you gotta have quick fingers, as I always tell you. Look at that, he's already selling to me. Oh, I thought I bought the other one. I was about to start crying. Like, I thought I bought him for 3K. I was, I was about to say, well, you know, we start from scratch all over again because we just lost a bunch of stubs right there. All right, 981. I want to get 10 of his. And look, he's already selling. Like, y'all don't understand. These cards flip. And another reason why I'm, you know, doing episode two of Flipping to a Mill right now is because I know all of y'all going to go and just flip to a mill real quick off of these and make it extremely hard for me to be able to do it once again so why not go ahead and do it for myself right now and then later on find the other cheat code that us together can go ahead and flip to a mill with like come on now you thought i wasn't bright you thought i wasn't smart with it that's my hurry post out of 3462 right oh no it's not let me let me actually undercut that man by one so we're actually gonna go at 3461 that's where each and every single Jorge Posada is going to be sold at, no matter what. Since I don't plan on staying on these two cards the entire episode, that's why I'm telling you it's no matter what. Because I want to see if I can find another nice little cheat code within the same episode. So then I have two options to like, you know what I'm saying? Flip my cards, go into a ranked seasons game, come out of the ranked seasons game, see positive 150k. And I'm like, ah, you know, life is good. I wish, I wish like trading stocks was this easy. I wish trading stocks was this easy. I wish investing was this easy because if investing was this easy, like I believe everyone would be millionaires or at least a good chunk of those that are willing to put in the effort. But then you can say this, like it's so weird because you can say the same thing about stocks. You can say, yo, stocks really is easy. You just got to go ahead and put in the effort. But I just don't know. I don't feel like that's the truth. That, that might just be me, but I feel like that's cap. All right, three, four, six, one. Let's put a bunch at 3461. Get it sold. All right. We're getting them sold quick as well. So, Hori Posada right now, he's thuming. I saw somebody outbid me over at Kenny Lofton. So, if anything, we'll be going back to Kenny Lofton. Yeah. Wait. That's that's our active order. 986. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So, as you can see right now, it's getting slow between the two. Nobody's really selling me any of the two. So, I'm going to go out of my way. And go into the inning program and see what new diamonds they have because usually these diamonds as time progresses they're gonna be selling for a ton or selling for a good or not selling for a ton they're gonna be active since everybody's gonna be unlocking them and getting them so finest and then that's a milestone card of future stars and a signature series milestone future stars and signature series and then the conquest map it had like space set two or something something along those lines so we're going to be checking those cards out in a second just to see where their prices are at. But the problem with those cards is 
flipping them is difficult since you have to keep in mind that hey yo these cards are going to be let me undercut real quick these cards are going to be unlocked pretty soon by a lot oh damn i shouldn't have even answered my order these cards are going to be unlocked soon by a lot of people so since they're going to be unlocked soon by a lot of people what that causes is for a lot of people to then go ahead 981 is mine for a lot of people to then go ahead and undercut each other especially if they feel like they need the stubs in order to make the stubs we're just going to go ahead and undercut this Hori posada because right now he's the most active one or overcut that guy by one and since he's the most active one i need to get as many of him as i possibly can so this should teach you another lesson when it comes to flipping if it's nothing crazy if it's only like five stubs i'm willing to overpay the five stubs or whatever it is but if he had raised it to like 1.3k i would have been like all right i'm gonna wait until he gets out of the market for a posada and then i'm gonna jump back in or i'm gonna just put my buy orders in and then just wait for it to disappear because usually people sell them quick whenever someone's paying a crazy amount for it so 986 let's put a couple more i want to get at least 10 of his because he's selling quick so getting at least 10 of his it's going to be good for us this is going to be number 10 as long as they don't sell any so one of them just got sold as we were about to go over there so 986 now we flip on over to this man kenny lofton three nine eight four three nine eight four is easy as well three nine eight four is easy as well so 63k it doesn't seem like we've made any stubs but clearly as you can see we have a lot of orders basically getting fulfilled right now and lots of orders that will continue getting fulfilled if you know what i mean oh snap i already got another buy order all right i'm getting undercut already am i no am i three four six one three four six one yeah that's me all right three four six one wait did i just yeah, yeah i'm getting undercut so three four five nine like i'm willing to battle with anyone for one stub i'm willing to battle with anyone or or for like 10 stubs at the at the profit margin that you're making here i, I don't think it honestly matters you're just willing to go like toe to toe with anyone to be honest 986 let's go put another one there for 986 and three four five nine i don't even know how you can get this hori posada like like i'm just amazed right now all right we need one more 986 control the market that's all we're looking to do control the market right now should i pay the extra five stubs for kenny lofton how many are we selling we're selling three but let me see if he's selling fast then i'm willing to pay the extra but if he's slow which right now it seems like he's a little slow and the competition seems to be heating up for him i might not want to do it but since it's only one order i'll just wait as well because if he had like a whole stack if he had like five in front of me then i would be prone to actually overpaying a little bit more for him but since it's not crazy i'm willing to wait all right three four five nine let's go ahead and check out some other cards so we set a milestone card a signature series and a future stars so the future stars is hunter green 36.9 k let's see how much we would make selling him right now let's say for example we would make oh that's that's not bad maybe we can actually get away with buying a couple um, this is like risky so I wouldn't suggest buying like a ton because once I once again as I said a lot of people are buying this card or a lot of people are gonna be unlocking him as soon as people unlock him they'll probably go and try to sell him instantly Luis Aparicio or is Luis Aparicio oh that's a good like differential as well but if he gets sold well I doubt he's gonna get sold instantly unless somebody needs them for the collection so this guy i don't think he's gonna be really a good investment i know that hunter green is just someone that a lot more people might be interested in using in general and then for the milestone larry doby larry doby is probably good for the collection 36k and 30k you see that's not really a good price differential for me to go ahead and try to risk it for the biscuit so we're gonna go back to hunter green see if we're still the top bid or not and i just don't feel like battling to be honest like that is not my forte when it comes to flipping these cards especially in the big k areas i don't feel like battling all right 986 you see that's only one 458 so 
they're still undercutting us. That's us up there, but down here. How many how many orders does he have? He only has one. Alright, so I'm willing to live with that. I'm willing to live with that. And then everything else of ours is by. So this gives us the perfect opportunity to go and see if there are any other cards available that have great price differentials. Like look, this Patrick Corbin, this Adam Eaton, great price differentials. You can probably make a crazy amount of stubs, but that's only if it gets sold, which I they probably don't get sold as often. That's why the price differentials are that high. You need to find cards that are just active in the market. Like back then, we used to trade this Monte Irvin all the time. Like all the time. I don't even think you can get him anymore. So I doubt he's going to be available widely like that. I know that the breakout, where is he? Or the impact veteran, Joey Votto. I'm pretty sure you can get him from PAX. So he still might be available a good a good chunk. And if we can flip him, that's, that's actually a pretty good profit. We flip him for, let's say, 15K. Worst comes to worst, right? That's, that's like... 6k a pop but that's not bad at all but let's cancel these because like i said i don't think they're going to be jumping the ones that i believe are going to be jumping are the ones we're focused on currently and then probably a bunch of these other little cars they're probably going to be jumping as well so um where where is our sell order three four five nine let's cancel all of them i like canceling them all at once that way I don't have to like keep looking back and be like, yo, am I outbidding myself or not? So 3,456, 3,456, and then 3,056. All right, I'll be back in an hour and I'll let y'all know how many stubs I was able to go ahead and get from just flipping these two cards. And if I find any of the cheat code, y'all already know. All right, I'm coming back to you all right now because we're about to hit one hour on the dot. We actually got 10 seconds left, right? We started with around 60K. We have 213K. And then we got a ton of more stubs coming in. So I want to say that we made roughly like 180K. And there are a ton of other orders because it just got overwhelming, to be completely honest with you all. Like, I still have to sell a couple more John Francos that I do have. And let me just tell you all, and I left this for the end of the video. So if you made it this far, you're in luck, right? So listen, we know that coming, I believe it's going to be... Okay, that is not exactly the screen I wanted to go to, but all right. All right. We know that coming the 19th is the last big one, right? So that means it's going to be the final con collection. So if you stock up on these silver 79 and below, and I'll tell you the only sets that they're in. So you don't waste time looking for them through any other set. Rookie, breakout, veteran, all-star, and then postseason. Those are the only sets that are in. So that's where you're going to want to be looking. And I don't even waste my time, even though I would highly suggest you just stock up and get at least like... 25 of each at the current price that they're at in terms of the ones that have like a 1k price differential not the ones that are like 4.4k and the 5k ones because you can't sell them above 5k so you would end up losing stubs but the ones that are like 100 stubs or so and you see that 1000 plus profit margin you want to stock up on because when the big one drops i'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to come back to the game just to get that collection and you're going to be able to sell them off at a higher price than what you invested but what i did for this entire hour was i basically looked for the ones that were like under 300 stubs and were selling for more than 200 2k so for example this john franco right here he's been selling extremely well and i'll show you all my completed orders so you guys can see we have a bunch of kenny loftons we have rob nen john franco john franco rob nen they've been selling really well we have sean rodriguez says we have all of that good stuff so right now i'm just gonna go ahead and empty out everything that we got so we're still looking to sell two more of john franco in terms of breakouts the ones i've really been focusing or the one i really focused on was rob nen because he's the only one that has that price differential ken griffey senior jumps up to 2k he's a great one to go ahead and buy and then sean rodriguez is also a great one to go ahead and buy then when we go to the all-star you can stock up on these that's what i would highly recommend i don't stock up i just look at them and if they were above 2k 2,000 stubs then I would have invested 
during this hour but because the time is against me i'm not but on my own time right now like off video i'm gonna go ahead and do my best to at least get of each and every single one of these silvers 25 to 50 that way when friday comes on this account in particular i'll be able to make a crazy amount of stubs now they've been tanking the price of cards like kenny lofton pretty heavily as you guys can see they've dropped all the way down to 2.5k which is fine with me i ain't really stressing it like that but you know at the end of the day we're done with this video i'm gonna do my best these cards right here i think that they're gonna inflate in price as well so they're probably good to stock up on as well i'm gonna try to get 50 of the ones that are really really low in value just so i can on friday flip it and make a ton of more stubs but yeah i'm gonna try to do 50 each 50 buy orders for each and every single one and uh, stay tuned because as you all know we got another episode of flipping to a mill let me look at the schedule this one is most likely coming out on uh, monday since the day is saturday our next flip to a mill is actually on wednesday so make sure you stay tuned this is coming right at you all right have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed make sure you check out the description like red subscribe button turn on the channel notifications i'll catch you all in the next one peace out